Yo, 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 what's poppin'? It's Larry Q. Drawn Jr., the HNIC CEO here, Larry Drawn Music. And yes, man, I love you, man. God's been working through this whole God is Love series. If you haven't seen the other videos, please go back. We've been worshiping on tape. <laughs> We've been going in. God's really been blessing. So let's, let's keep going. I mentioned in the previous videos, you know what I'm saying, a couple of testimonies. I was explaining, you know what I'm saying, how God touched my friend, you know what I mean? You know, she got prayer and, you know, she got some dough. Also, and I mentioned how somebody who was in Satanism showed up to one of the meetings, showed up to one of the black experiences, you know what I'm saying, on Sundays. And I thank God because those are the type of people I'm trying to get at because God loves those people. You know what I mean? And in fact, the only reason why they're going so hard in the paint was something so, uh, uh, contrary is because they saw some fake stuff in the church that made them say well fine i'll get it on my own i don't need you you see what i'm saying um and yeah man the uh in in this whole process this has raised the question of uh of apologetics in fact i actually have been teaching apologetics at one of the churches i play drums at you know what i mean so i just want to just you know what i'm saying just you know just give you a little bit about how the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me. You know what I'm saying? You can take this or leave it because I understand that the whole notion of apologetics has been around, you know what I'm saying, for a minute. Um, <clears throat> but essentially, apologetics is just a defense of the Christian faith, right? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, cash use, you know, various scriptures, you know what I'm saying? You know, the joint about people asking you questions, you always being able to give an answer, you know what I'm saying, about the hope, you know, that's in you, you know what I mean? And, you know, studies show that self-approval work may not need to be ashamed rightfully to the word of truth. You know what I'm saying? All of that. And I, I agree completely with that. Uh, in fact, I actually have uh, an apologetic writing by Flavius Josephus. You know what I'm saying? It's called The Antiquities of the Jews. It's a really dope read for any uh, for any Bible student because it's what it does is is that how, like in the same fact, a lot of people, they, they credit, I guess, the effectiveness of of my ministry so far because they're like yo you say you you convey the, the gospel in a way that i can understand like you you break down scriptures in a way i can understand it has nothing to do with me this is what jesus did moreover is what paul did do you understand that all that paul was quoting was the old testament he just had a personal revelation of jesus christ to the point where he looked at the Old Testament, he saw Jesus in it, and he was like, bruh, this is what this means. That's all that it is. I'm of the persuasion that apologetics, or the defense of the gospel, is built into Christianity. Now, whether you were raised with that understanding uh, or not, it really doesn't make any difference. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you through scripture that the reality of apologetics... Uh, it's built into the gospel. The Bible says that this kingdom, that the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. You know what I mean? The Bible talks, and it, it, you know what I'm saying? That's the translation from uh, that scripture that talks about that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent taken by force. The kingdom of God isn't this passive, you know what I'm saying, this passive kind of thing. Jesus knows exactly who he is, and he's trying to show us exactly who we are in him, and he wants us to go out with boldness. In fact, that's what we were praying about in the previous videos. If you haven't seen that, please check that out. Um, but yeah, man, you know, apologize being the defense of the faith. This kingdom is forcefully advancing. God ain't afraid of nobody. So... All that happens is, is that whenever you minister to people, you know what I mean, of different faiths or of no faiths, whether you're witnessing to people in different religions or whether they're atheists or agnostic, it doesn't matter. You're supposed to be led of the Spirit. You're supposed to ask God, God, what do I need to say to this person right here and now? This Kairos moment in time. What do I what do I need to say? You know what I'm saying? What would you have me to say to this person that's gonna reach them at their point of need? You know what I mean? And then you say it and you let God do what he do. Because you're either sowing or you're watering, but it's God to give it the increase. The Bible talks about how, you know what I'm saying, there's thirty, sixty, and hundredfold reaping 
of, you know what I'm saying, whenever whenever the word is sown and watered, right, and God giving the increase. 30-fold means, you know what I'm saying, you know, like, yo, you, you get a little result. 60-fold means, yo, you know what I'm saying, you can, yo, it's like, man, like, I see some drastic, Difference is then a hundredfold. There's sometimes you're gonna talk to people and they're gonna be like, Oh my god, oh my god, they're gonna break down, they're gonna start crying, and they're gonna be like, Yo, I receive you 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 might get them you might you might pray for them and they'll receive Jesus, as well as whatever other miracle you need for them. There are other instances where you're going to pray with people or you're going to talk with people because everybody don't want you to pray for them. There's sometimes where you're just going to talk with people and you're just going to just be sharing Jesus with them and you're just going to go on about your business. Then there are other times where your life, you know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is telling me right now, one way that you can articulate that 30-fold analogy is people never talk with you they just watch your life from a distance and the word of god the reality of the gospel is being sown into their lives by their watching your life you know what i'm saying because we ain't only talking this thing i show you my faith by my works you feel me yeah man so yeah, this this gospel is forcefully advancing. Jesus Jesus says that a city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. And he's talking about you being a Christian. He says that ye are the light of the world. He says that you ain't chose me, bro. I chose you. You know what I'm saying? Whom God did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. And he's ordained us that we go forth and that we bear much fruit. But the only way you can bear that fruit is by your continual communion, your relationship with him. John, the 15th chapter, explains how this whole thing works. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. Without us being connected to that vine. We can't bear any fruit. But if we are connected to that, I'm going to read it to you. Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. But every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it so that it may bring forth more fruit. A lot of times the trials and tribulations that come to you in your life ain't the devil. It's God laying the cross on you so that you can bear even more fruit. You feel what I'm saying? Now, Jesus says, now ye are clean through the word that I spoke to you. He's like, bro, now you about to get it. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can't do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. But if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Man, that's so much funk right there, because... And we'll get into it. I, I know that the Lord, he'll, he'll have us go. We're going to talk about the free will. What, what free will is really, what free will is really designed to do. You know what I mean? In most cases, because we allow sin to be a continual hindrance in our lives, we never get to the point of exercising our free will the way that it's supposed to be exercised. But, but God's going to open up that door. I want to stay on this apologetics piece right quick. Let's speak to that will piece though in this, in this, in this standpoint, right? You ask God. You got to choose to believe that God is that dude. The Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please God. And he that comes to God must first believe that he is. You got to believe that God is this dude. You got to believe that God is that dude. That he's smarter than you. That he's orchestrating. That You got to believe that God has put you in Starbucks at exactly 4.45 p.m. And you're sitting across from a lady who you've never met before. And that God has something very specific that he's been dealing with her about. You know what I'm saying? That, that you don't know because you don't know her. But he wants you to say this one thing. He wants you to either sow this word or water the word that he's already sown into her. You know what I'm saying? You got to believe that. 
And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So what you got to do in that process is, okay, first off, you believe that God's put you here, that you should bear much fruit. God has predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son. Jesus Christ went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, right? So you got to believe that you are a son of God and that he sent you forth, right? So you get past that point. All right, God, thank you for putting me here. Thank you for putting me out here in public. What you need me to do, bro? You believe that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. If you ask God a question, because he is the answer, Jesus is the answer, he'll give you an answer. And he'll tell you what exactly you need to do in that particular situation. That trumps a miracle, a miracle or God's presence showing up in, an, in, 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 in a situation in somebody's life trumps any argument that you can get into. A, mir a miracle settles everything. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> now, what some people will try to do, and this is because the wisdom of the world is against the wisdom of God. It's in complete, the carnal mind is in complete opposition against the mind of God. It is. It's, it's, it's never going to submit to the Spirit of God. It can't. But, through you submitting to the Holy Spirit, your mind can now be regenerated. What happens is that God moves your carnal mind and he gives you the mind of Christ. When you, when God does something for somebody, when God performs a miracle, whenever he says, when he does something, signs and wonders, something that just makes somebody be like, yo, bro, how did you do that? Like, how did you even know that? And you telling me it was, it's Jesus' fault. It ain't me, bro. It's Jesus. He told me that. That, 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 see, the Bible talks about to understand the love of God. The reason why God does these things for people is because he loves them. He loves that Satanist. He loves that Muslim. He loves that Hindu. He loves that lesbian. He loves that homosexual. And it talks about that the, it, the, 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 the prayer in Ephesians, the third chapter, is that we would comprehend the love of God, which passive knowledge. You see what I'm saying? My only gripe with the whole apologetics conversation is, is that a lot of times... Us smart people, we can get so hung up on how much we know. And a lot of times, what you know means absolutely, it means absolutely nothing. You know what I'm saying? How much Greek and Aramaic I know. Or it means absolutely nothing how much of that I know whenever I'm talking to a skateboarder. I'm downtown and I see a skate, I'm chilling at the coffee shop and a kid on a skateboard rolls by. He could give the first flip about how much Greek and Aramaic I know. You see what I'm saying? That's why the love of God, passive knowledge. I just need to minister to his need. God, what do you, what do you need to, what do you need me to say to him? What do you want to say to him through me that will minister to right where he is? And when you look at the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven was, is forcibly advancing. That's how Jesus ministered to everybody. Jesus was able, that's how it comes to the gospel message. It's so simple that a child can understand it. Let's not complicate this thing, smart people. You know what I mean? God, that's how Jesus was able to minister to every strata of society, to every age, demographic, to every sex, creed, whatever. He was able to talk to everybody because he had the wisdom of God, which is not the wisdom of this world. I want to read to you some scripture. Right quick, it's talking about that because as a minister of the gospel, you are a minister of the of the of the wisdom of God, and I want to make this delineation between being a nerd on your own and then being a nerd for Jesus. The first thing you got to do is you just got to forget how much you know, because what you know, the Bible says that just as high as above, just just as high as the heavens are above the earth. That's how high God's thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says, in fact, we're just going to read about it. This is what God has to say about the wisdom of the world. Where do you want me to start, Jesus? We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Jesus said, freely ye have received, now freely ye give away. Now we have received, 
not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, that which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, cons- comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness, for their foolishness unto him, and neither can they know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, and yet he himself is judged no man. For who can, for who have known the mind of the Lord that he can instruct him? Who's known the mind of God that he can talk to him about anything? But we had a mind of Christ. Check this out. But unto them which are called, right? So, so unto the Christians, right? The people. Here's how we're supposed to minister to people. Unto them that are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. The reason why is because God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen, yea, the things that are not to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. I've noticed a lot of times whenever I witness to really smart people, God will have me say stuff so regular. He had me say it. You know what I mean? That's how, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm an educated dude. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I can articulate myself. But a lot of times, God has me talk to my really, really, really smart friends in the most basic way as possible to completely shatter that glass ceiling of how smart they are. Because the thing is, is that how smart you are means absolutely nothing when it comes to God. Because God's smarter than you. That's just logic. You know what I'm saying? God is the smartest person ever, right? And it would behoove us to check out what he has to say and to think about stuff how he thinks about it, right? Well, the gospel is so simple that a child can understand it. So, there are instances where God uses me to be just real simple with people, but there are times where the whole point of God making us smart, the whole point of God making me a musician is because God wants me to go into the world of musicianship and talk to people about Jesus using musicianship lingo. The reason why God's made you a lawyer is because he wants you to use lawyer lingo to win people to Christ. The reason I come to God's made you a chef or a culinary artist is because he wants you to show his handiwork within that art form to bring people to Jesus. Your, he says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every living creature. Your world is your sphere of influence. And God is so smart that he's put you, he made you good at something on planet earth, so that his glory might be manifested through you doing whatever he made you good at. And by his glory being made manifest, I don't mean just you being good at it, you getting paid a lot of money. No. The Jesus in you, the heaven that's in you, starts to jump out on everybody that's around you. You see what I'm saying? Apologetics is way more simple than uh, than how man has tried to elevate it. I'm going to talk about the intricacies, you know what I'm saying, in the next video. But, yo, it just boils down to this, yo. You got Jesus. People need Jesus. Ask Jesus to show you how to share him with other people. And he'll do it, and you'll get results. Go out and do it. And then... Talk about it on Facebook because I want to hear about it. I love you. In the name of Jesus, man. I'll holler at you soon. Next video. Peace.